All right, so that works great. So my if statement works great. My case statement's awesome. But I'm still hard coding in this number here. I'm still typing in 7 million there for my number. Uh, not a good idea. We don't want to do that. We want to have a table somewhere that holds these values. Uh, it makes it very easy to update. When you process your cube, it pulls in those values from that table. Uh, you can also have multiple tables with multiple levels. So you can have it at the year level, at the month level, just about wherever you'd like. So if I go back to my DSV for this, open up the data source view, you'll see that I've got a table here that I've created called sales goal. And it's got my uh, it's got the year on it and it's got my goal. If we uh, right click on this and just edit this, this is actually just a named query I created. Just a little uh, union all statement here. Uh, so I've got a, a goal for the year 2005, I've got a goal for 2006, a goal for 2007 and 2008. So I have a different goal for each year. Now I can join this based on the fact that I have the year in here. I can join this over to my date dimension and create a relationship between uh, this table and my date dimension. Now I use this little select unit all here. Uh, typically you wouldn't do this. Typically you'd go back and actually create a table and load that table with either like an ETL process or something like that. And what did I do? I created a relationship, as you can see right here, over to my year on my date table. So I just grabbed calendar year, basically, and dragged it over and dropped it on year. You do have to have a primary key on that, so I did right-click on the sales goal table here and create a primary key on that sales goal table. Once that's done, once you have that table created, we go over to our queue, and we need to do one more thing. Uh, we need to oh, actually two more items before we get to work. We need to right-click over here inside of our measures and get our sales goal to show up inside of here by adding a new measure group. So my sales goal measure group right there. So basically I right click in here, select new measure group, and I select that sales goal table and add it in here. It adds an account below. I deleted that. I don't need the account. I just need the goal. And I put that inside of my cube. You can actually hide this too from your users. You can go to the properties on this. And we can set this to uh, hidden over here, invisible to false if we wanted to also. So main users can't just drag and drop the goal out, which really wouldn't make any sense to them. One last step before we get this to work, we need to go over to our dimension usage tab here, and we need to create this relationship right here, my calendar year. So I need to have a relationship between my sales goal and my date dimension. In this case, I'm using the, the due date, uh, which is a role-playing dimension. So if I click on the calendar year here, here you'll see my item I created, calendar year, maps over to year on that KPI sales goal table. You do get a little message down below here that comes up, it says if you select a non-key granularity attribute, you can run into problems here. That's fine because I know my granularity is going to be okay, it's at the year level, and I'm going to write some statements to make sure I uh, control that uh, with those case statements and that if statement. So go back to calculations now, I'm sorry, go back to KPIs now, and instead of typing in 7 million here, I'm going to create a tuple. Basically, the tuple, this item I grabbed earlier right here, and place that right inside of there. And here's my tuple. So due date, dot calendar month, dot current member, so whatever member I'm at at the time, and then comma measures dot goal. And that measures dot goal right there, that is actually coming from that KPI goals table that I created back in the DSV. So now, whatever level I'm at, it's going to pull the proper year for that. All my other items are going to work, my, my year here, this level, and this checking if it's empty down here, all that's still going to work. But now I'm just pulling the value from a table instead of hard coding in a number. Let's go ahead and do a build deploy. There we go. Let's go back to our queue. When you uh, make a change like that, you need to refresh your data. So we go to data and click on refresh all. It refreshes, and there we go. So now we can see my goal numbers are different for each year. And you see when I did hit the goal, it's green, and when I didn't hit the goal, it's red, and I get a little status indicator only showing up at the uh, year level here. So I could do the same thing. I could create another table and have it at the month level, put uh, KPI month level goals in there and have them join the exact same way. I could do it at the, the day level if I wanted to. Or I could do it by product or by department or by uh, category, just about any table. As long as you can create a table and then make a join back in your DSV, you can use these goals here. All right, so let's go back here. So that is KPIs. Real simple there. The only real keyword you got to remember here, the KPI goal and KPI value there. All right, so that's dynamic KPIs from a, from a table. Our next section, we're going to talk about actions in a cube. 
So actions allow you to drill down and see details, they allow you to bring up reports, and they allow you to actually call URLs also. So if you right-click over here on the left-hand side, you'll see those three actions right here that come up. There's my drill through action, my reporting action, and then the other one which is new action, and typically that's used for uh, pulling up a URL. There's several other options that are available. We're going to cover URLs uh, in today's webinar. So if I right-click and select new drill through action here, I can give it a name here, whatever I want to call it. Select the measure group I want it to work in. In this case, I can, it could be all the measure groups or just uh, one or the other. And then down below here, I can select what I want to show in that measure group. So I can click on the drop-down menu here. I can say in the details here, I want to show uh, maybe my sales territory. And I can select the items I want to show, maybe a region, country, and group. So I'm selecting the details that are associated with that row on my fact table. This is typically used uh, when you need to drill down and get to details on something, and slicing by those details would give you too much data. So for example, a good example of that is uh, using the uh, transaction ID on a uh, kind of a retail data warehouse, so a retail cube. So I've got a, a table that has all of my transactions on it. The transact each transaction has a unique ID. I, I'm not going to slice by that number. I'm never going to give my end users the ability to slice by the transaction ID because um, I'm going to have say I have a million sales on my fact table, if they drag out transaction ID, then I'm going to see a million rows on my Excel sheet. Not something that's going to be really useful for them. But sometimes they're going to get down to a level, they're going to get into a product or a store or get to a, a certain date also, and they're going to be down to maybe there's 10 or 20 sales there, and they need to see the details of those sales. But they can right click now and click on the details action I'm creating and see the details of those sales. So if I delete this one here, you'll see there's one I've already created earlier called details right here details it works on the reseller sales measure group and you see I put in a revision number unit price and the reseller name here so it's the details that I need to see about that so I'll go back to Excel now and let's actually uh, get rid of the uh, internet sales so my go to meeting gets in the way over here let me see if I can get that out of the way Uh, this is Mike. I guess it seems like I got kicked out of the meeting by somebody. Can you make me organizer again and make me presenter? Hey, Mike. Sorry, we had a small glitch here. Yep, I'm here. I'm um, taking it, and you should be an organizer again. You got it? I am good to go. Thank you. All right. Sorry about that, everybody. All right, so let's go back into my cube here. Let's go to uh, my reseller sales this time, and let's go ahead and clear all this out of here. Let's grab, say, sales amounts, fine. And let's start slicing and dicing. Let's get down to some, some details here. Let's say a due date calendar here. And I, I drill into a certain year, and maybe a certain month. And I see these sales here, and I want to see the details of that $844,000. I need to see the details of where that came from. So I can right click on it, go down to additional actions, and there's my detailed action that I created now. Click on details, and there's my details. There's my unit prices for each one of those. There's my reseller name. So there's all the details of my sales. So you can get to the details of my uh, of my data now. Again, something I wouldn't slice by, but I would want to see the details of it. And right clicking allows you to do that with those actions. All right. So there's another action. It's a really cool action, and it's a URL action here. So we can go into the URL by right clicking here and going to a new action. And there's a type here called URL right here. So I can select the URL action and actually bring up a URL by right-clicking on an item. Let's go ahead and delete that one. I actually already created one earlier. I called it map. 
And what I've done here is I, you can select a target type. So you can select where the person can, can click inside of your Excel sheet. So they can click on a measure. They can click on a, uh, an attribute. They can click on a, a hierarchy. They can click on just about anything inside of there with this type of action. And from the drop down menu here, you can see I can select cells, the cube itself, uh, any level in the hierarchy. What I've done here is I've selected hierarchy members. So if they click on a member in the hierarchy, it will bring up some details for me. And if I go down to below here, Here's my expression. So basically I just put a, a Google Maps thing here and I said uh, plus sales territory, territory, current member dot name. So it's basically going to pass in the name of where, whatever I click on inside of uh, my sales territory hierarchy uh, on the country. So I can pass in the country name to a Google Map and bring up that information. Uh, and this is done on my, my target object here is going to be the sales territory there. I got unselected somehow. All right, and let's go ahead and do a build deploy here. Actually, I'm not going to do a build deploy because it's already out there. So let's go out here and let's get rid of the date and let's drag in the sales territory here. If I can find it. Let's go back to internet sales. Use that. And let's go to sales territory. There it is. And expand that out. So I should be able to right click on the United States now and go to additional actions. There's the word map. Click on that map. It should bring up my browser, which it is, and you see it put United States right in there for me automatically. So you can imagine if I've got uh, addresses in here, you know, a full address of someone, I can right click on their address now and boom, bring up a map showing their location, their, uh, their street uh, in some sort of location here. If you have an intranet site, maybe you get a list of all your products or maybe employees or, or whatever it is you have uh, in your intranet site, I can right click now and bring up a URL and pass in uh, the product ID and bring up a list of my products or, or pass in the employee ID and bring up that employee from my intranet site. So just about anything you want to do, you can do with URLs there. The, the key to that to remember here is this item right here. It's the uh, current member dot name. So you got to pass in that name uh, from the member that you're looking at. All right, so that's the two different types of actions that you can create uh, there. The other one is reporting action. Uh, this is actually using a report server, so you've got to have a report server set up here, a report path, and then you set up your parameters also. So uh, I don't have any reports set up to drill into today, but basically you put in your server, put in your path there, uh, and the path is actually the report name. And then from the drop down menu there under parameters, you select your parameters and add those to this. Um, the parameters don't pull over automatically. The parameters do not automatically pull from reporting services, so you have to type them in, and it is uh, case sensitive. So if your parameter back in uh, your report is first name or, or it's a uh, calendar year, you got to come in here and you got to type that name in exactly uh, to get it to match under parameters. Uh, so that's a little gotcha there. If you type in the name wrong, uh, it will not work. I will pass that parameter over for you. All right, so those are the three types of actions that you can do. So that uh, URL one is a really useful one, especially for the internet site that you want to see. Uh, there is one other option that you have here, and this is a condition. It's an optional item, obviously. Uh, that's where I can say, okay, only if they're in this territory, or only if the measure is greater than this number, or whatever kind of condition I want to put on that. Uh, so I, just like that if-then statement we did before, basically putting in a condition here. It has to meet that condition uh, for them to be able to click on that action. If you want it to work everywhere in the cube, then I'll leave that blank, like I did here. All right, so that's KPIs and actions. And the last thing we're going to cover today will be calculations in the cube itself. So we're going to talk about a little bit of MDX here. So I'm going to show you a couple of very common calculations here that you can build. And then I'm going to show you a much easier way to do calculations going forward in the future. So a very common calculation is year to date. It's something that people want to use a lot. And to do year to date, do a couple of things here. We need to put in the aggregate function. That basically is uh, telling I want to sum up the values here. I need to use the periods to date function. And periods to date says I want you to get the values from this date up to this date. So my beginning date is calendar year. That's the level I want to start at. And I want to go up to the current member. So if I'm in uh, 2006 and I'm looking at August, it's going to go all the way back to uh, January 2006. And it'll give me the, the, it'll aggregate up the, in this case, my sales amount here, all the way up from the beginning of the year up to now. You can also use, instead of periods to date, there's another function I could replace that and put in YTD. And if you do YTD, you actually don't even need to put in this calendar year here. Uh, it actually knows now that you want to go back to the year. So YTD would actually eliminate uh, one line there for you. 
Uh, here's a gotcha though. If you if you use YTD and set up periods to date, uh, then on your date dimension, you've got to make sure you have your type set up correctly. So I go back here and I click on year and go to properties. Right here under type, you got to make sure you have years set as your type there. If you don't have that set, then the YTD function will not work. It will tell you uh, it expects a year level and a year level was not found in your hierarchy. Also, the date dimension itself, you click on the date dimension and go to the properties of that. You want to make sure that the type of the date dimension is set to a time dimension also. So those two things, as long as it's set to a time dimension and you're set up to a, uh, a date dimension uh, for years. Also, you can do the same thing with quarters and months and date. Uh, all those are options available too. So quarter date is a QTD function, month to date, MTD. So all those will work, but only if you have that set up properly there. Okay, let's go back to our cube now. Go back to my calculation. So this calculation works great. Here's my year to date for my sales amount here. Let's go back to my browser here, and let's see what that looks like. I'm just using the, the browser built into here, so I'm going to clear this out. Uh, let's grab my internet sales amount, and let's grab the YTD sales right here. That's the name of the calculation I created, right? Yep, YTD sales. And you notice that the YTD sales is blank. Nothing shows up inside of here, and that's because it requires that hierarchy. So I've got to grab that date calendar hierarchy here and drop it in here, and there we go. Now if I expand out one of my years, you can see that it is working now. So at the beginning of the year, in the first quarter, the numbers are the same, which makes sense. It should be. And then in the next quarter, there's how much money I made in that quarter right here on this side. And there's the summation of the, the first two numbers here. So you'll see uh, these two numbers here are summed up to give me that number on the right there. And so on and so forth down the list here. And at the end of the year, the numbers match. I'm looking at the total for the year here. And there's my YTD for the year, which is uh, of course, the summation for that year also. So it works great for that calculation. Go back in here. Another common one is sales uh, prior period. I want to look at my prior period. This gives you the ability to analyze data to see if your sales are going up or down very easily. And the calculation for that is very simple. Where am I? Again, back inside of my hierarchy here, calendar, current member. And I'm doing a lag one, just a lag one. This is a tuple here. So it's just got the comma here. It's got my parentheses at the beginning, parentheses at the end here. So it's a tuple. And I'm just saying, give me the previous uh, item here, which is lag one. So we'll go back one level. This works at whatever level you're at. So if I go back to my browser here, uh, let's get rid of my sales there. And let's bring in prior period. And if I drop in prior period, you can see that I'm getting the prior period. So there's the period there from above coming down. And even at the year level here, it works too. So even the quarter level, month level, year level, it's going to work. And so I can now easily compare uh, this year to last year's numbers here and see if I've increased or decreased my sales from the previous period. You can do another calculation now, and you could say you subtract sales period from sales amount to see the difference here and get a you know maybe a plus or minus amount showing how much you've increased or decreased. You could also divide by the numbers too, showing a percentage growth over time. A couple of very common calculations there. All right, so those are great, but here's the problem. I have got a bunch of calculations in my cube here. Uh, I've got I don't know, probably 50 different calculations in this cube, and I want a year-to-date calculation and a prior period calculation and a period over period and a period difference. I want you know, five or six different calculations for each member, uh, for each measure in my cube. Here's a problem with that. Now I've got to create that many calculations. So if you want say five calculations and you have a hundred measures, that's five hundred calculations you would have to create in your cube to make that happen. It's not, it's not uncommon to see that happen. I've had clients in the past who wanted that many calculations in the cube. So to avoid having to write five hundred different MDX calculations, we can create what's called a date calculation dimension and create scope statements to say, okay, when you're in this section of the cube, do this calculation. And it will work for any measure that you have in the cube. And I'll show you how I did that. So I've got this little scope statement down here. It's all commented out. I'm going to uncomment this now and bring this into my cube so you can see it. The first thing I did, I went back to my DSV, and I created a new table in here, and I called it date calculation, date calc. Notice there's no relationship between this table and anything inside of my DSV. That's perfectly fine. No relationships are needed here because my scope statements are going to tell uh, the cube what to do. 
let's look at this name query here I created. And you'll see that all I did was I created an actual calculation. I'm sorry, I created a, 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 an actual uh, column here under calculation, and I created an ID column here. And you'll see my ID is 1, and one calculation called actual. And that's going to show my actual number, the real number. And then there's ID 2, a year to date, ID 3, prior period. And this could go on and on. So you could, you could have 10 different calculations in here, or 100 different calculations if, if you wanted to. I'm just doing just the two for today. Uh, again, you could go back into the actual your um, relational database and create a table that holds this information, so you can uh, update that table. But I just created it here inside the DSV with a little uh, select and union alls. You do need to create a primary key on that, so I right-clicked over here and set lo set logical primary key. And you see the little key up here is there. Well, once you've done that, go back over to our cube here. Let me uh, go ahead and save this. Go back over to our cube here, and we need to go to our solution explorer. And I need to create a dimension here, a date calculation dimension. So you simply right-click on the dimension here, say create new dimension, and create it based on that date calculation dimension. A couple more things you have to do to make that work. We need to open up that date calculation dimension, which is right down here. And two things I did here. I went to ID, and I hid that. So if you go to properties on that, you'll see the attribute hierarchy visible set to false. I don't want my end users to see the ID. They don't, that doesn't mean anything to them. It's not, it doesn't matter. They're not going to use that at all. Calculation, though, they do want to see that, so that is available. And I did one other item here. If you look right here, I have this is aggregable set to false, and I selected a default member here. So what is aggregable says is uh, there, there should be an all level. So everything can sum up to an all level. Well, because I don't need it all level here, I just need the actual, I need the YTD, prior period, I just need those calculations, then I don't need an all level here. In fact, it would probably confuse my end user to see an all level. So I'm going to set is aggregable to false, which gets rid of that all level. When you select, when you set is aggregable to false, you have to select a default member. It's required to select a default member because now when I drag this out, it just, it's not going to put the all level in there. It needs to know what member to put in there. In this case, the uh, all member uh, is now replaced with actual. So if I click on my default member here, I selected actual right there. And you can come in here and just, you can actually choose it by selecting it here also by highlighting it. But that's what I'm doing. So I'm actual is my default member now. If I go to browse my dimension, you'll see that all I see is actual, prior period, and year to date in my little cube, my dimension browser here. So there is no all level. All right, so once you're done with that, I'm going to go back over to calculations now. And we're going to use what's called scope statements. And what a scope statement says is, I want you to do this, whatever that this happens to be, I want you to do this for this section of the cube. So what section of the cube am I using? I'm using that YTD calculation, that one column I have in that dimension. And what do I want to do? There's a this section right here below it. I click on that, and here's my this statement. And you'll notice this is identical to that year-to-date calculation I was just showing you. The only difference I changed was this says actual now instead of internet sales amount. So I'm not having to specify a specific measure now. I'm able to put the word actual in here. Now any measure that I drop in, up under this dimension will then give me the year-to-date calculation for that measure. You need an end scope statement after that also. I did the same thing for prior period. So I did a scope statement for prior period. And then here I did my, my prior period calculation here. This equals, and then there's my prior period. Again, all I did was replace the internet sales amount with the actual from my date calculation I mentioned. So if you can write an MDX statement, you can do this. Create a table and drop your index inside of here and use actual instead of the, actual, uh, instead of the uh, measure name. Once you do that, go to browser now. And let's get rid of these items here. And I want to see YTD sales amount, right? I want to see that sales amount. Let's drag over internet sales amount here. And I'm going to scroll down here. And there's my date calculation dimension right there. I'm going to drag that calculation right up top here. And boom, just like that, I've got my actual amount showing, my prior period showing, and my YTD, my year to date showing also. That's, that's using internet sales amount. Let's go ahead and get rid of internet sales amount, drop that out. Let's drop in something different. Let's drop in my uh, internet sales count. Done. Just like that. So we can see 
We're getting year to date summed up, and we're getting my prior periods. From the drop-down menu here, you can select those items. You can select actual, prior period, year to date. So I can select what I want to show here inside of this also. This is great for your end user now. Now instead of your end users having to scroll through hundreds of calculations to try to find the values they want and drag and drop out, now they can simply drag out the calculation dimension and then from the drop down in here select the calculations that they want to see just by basically checking off these items here. It's a great time saver for you in development and it's actually a great time saver for your end users in being able to query the data and pull in what they need. It does take a little bit of training. You're going to have to teach your end users to take this date calculation and drag it out onto the, the uh, either Excel or whatever items you're using to browse through your cube, but uh, this is a great way to uh, get date calculations without having to write hundreds of calculations there. All right, so that is calculations, KPIs, and actions that we're going to cover today. So I am actually done with my presentation here. Let me show my last slide here. So if you guys want to contact me, you can. Let me show that. I can get it to come up. There we go. So there's my blog there, MikeDavisSQL.com, and I'm also on BIDN.com, and you can follow me on Twitter if, you're, uh, if you'd like to tweet. It's uh, at MikeDavisSQL is my Twitter account. And uh, with that being said, I'll go ahead and pass it back over to uh, Rachel or Melissa, whoever's on the line, and uh, we'll take some questions. I hear somebody breathing. Okay. All right. Yep. Great. No problem. <laughs> So Andy has a question. Do you have to do anything special for non aggre I'm sorry, I'm gonna do my best to pronounce this word, Andy. Uh, aggregatable measures when showing year to date values? Uh, a great question. Okay, so uh, if you had a, a measure that is non-aggregatable, something that you can't aggregate up, uh, then year to date really wouldn't make sense. You're not gonna you're not gonna sum that number up or or pull that number up to any level above it. Now uh, there are items in here on your cube structure here. If we get this out of the way here, if we go to our properties over here, uh, under our aggregate functions right here, you can select the aggregate function that you want to show. In this case here, I got none on that one. Uh, there's several available here that you can choose from. So you could do first child, last child, something like that. That would be what would show inside of there. Uh, but YTD really wouldn't make sense on a non-aggregatable measure though. Good question. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh, let's see. Scope does not make slow performance in SSAS database with big size. Okay. Question so mark? do scope statements? <laughs> yeah, gotcha. So do scope statements uh -huh. affect your um, performance? Uh, no, they, they they really don't affect the performance because uh, they're still running the formula engine uh, to create those calculations or, or to calculate those numbers on the fly when you drag and drop them out there. So whether you're using a scope statement or whether you're actually running this MDX here, uh, it's still going to run at a, uh, about the same rate. I wouldn't, I wouldn't see any difference at all. Uh, I use a state calculation dimension in just about all my clients, and I've had anybody complain about performance <laughs> dragging these out. They run uh, fairly quickly. Okay, great. Good question. Uh, we have another question from Keith. Mm -hmm. Why were all the values for actual prior period and year-to-date the same values? They were. Um, according to Keith, they were. I don't think so, Keith. If you could clarify. Oh, you mean the yeah. first one? Are you talking about the they first are. one? They are the same values. Hmm. That's a good question That's then, Keith. <laughs> uh, didn't it work for sales amount? Hmm. What did I do wrong there? Let's see. Uh, what did I use? I used due date calendar member here. Maybe I didn't use due date here. Let's try these clear this out and see what happens. Due date calendar and that sales amount. Oops, sales amount. Date calculation here. Hmm, very strange. Why is it doing that? Well, I apologize. I've got some. I must have something uh, typed in wrong here for my scope statement to for that. Probably a typo in my uh, scope statement here somewhere. I promise you it works. <laughs> yeah, I do this all. I do this for all my clients. It works. Uh, but I must have a typo. I didn't even realize that before the before this started up. Uh, well, we can look into it, and then uh, Mike might be able to post a follow-up blog and explain what exactly happened. Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll do that. I'll, I'll look into it and see. But I must have a typo in my in my calculation here for some reason. I don't know okay. why. 
All right. Thank you, though, Keith. Good question. <laughs> um, Scott would like to know. <laughs> Uh, we do. We enjoy that at Pragmatic Org. So how, it was rare to stump our experts. So um, Scott would like to know what's the best way to show mixed calculations. For example, show actuals and actual to date when filtered at the calendar level. What's the best way to show actuals and calendar actuals to date? Actuals to date. Actuals to date. Mm, I'm not sure if I understand uh, the, the question there. Uh, using this date calculation dimension is great because you can just select items you want to see. I can you know, uncheck items here and just mm -hmm. select the ones that I want to see. So mm -hmm. uh, that's just a great way to do it here. Uh, other than that, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there's any other insight I can uh, I'm not sure what mixed calculations are, but is it possible to show the actuals and the actuals to date when at the filtered calendar level? Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going yeah. to actuals oh, here okay. and uh, then the yes, items. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. An SSAS 2008 multi-select filter in Excel disables additional actions in Excel. Is there any solution for this? Is there any solutions? For, okay, just, let me bring that up. Let me read that one. Let me go to the yeah, page. it's by uh, Sergey at 11.30. Let me uh, stretch this out. Let me read, get to the questions here. 11.30? Mm-hmm. Uh, is this is AS so that multi select filter and Excel disabled additional actions in Excel? Multi select filter in Excel disables additional actions in Excel. Uh, I have not seen that. Um, if you have a multi select filter on there, you should be able to right click and get actions. I haven't seen that uh, do that, Sergey. So uh, I'll, I'll test it out later on, see if it actually happens to me, but I haven't seen it do that. If I use multi select filter, I, usually the actions work no problem. Okay, great. Sorry, I'm sorry I couldn't be more help on that one. Uh, Mike, do you want to pick the next question? Yeah, let's go down here. Okay. Uh, can you please slow down? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I do tend to talk fast. But the good thing is this is recorded. It's on, a, it's on the site, so you'll be able to watch that later on. Yeah, let me right. look at the questions here. I'll pick a couple of them. Sounds uh, good. Let's see. Why are all the values saying okay? And this seems your last slide. You probably did not give a quick value. Okay, same thing here. Everybody's calling me out on my uh, my <laughs> you No, know, did, did I do a build deploy on that? I don't know if I did a build deploy. That may have been a problem. I just did a build deploy just now. Let's go back in and reconnect. Ah, there we go. That's what it was. Oh. Ah, I did. <laughs> I did not do a build deploy. That's my problem. All right. So you would do a build deploy, and then I needed to do a reconnect right here to make that happen. All right. So I was like, I know that was working before I started this thing. There we go. <laughs> so there's uh, a prior period. And. And it was my year to date, so that's working now. There's your answer. So I uh, built. All right, let's go back to my questions. And let's see. Do you recommend any third-party MDX tools? Uh, yes, uh, there are a couple of great tools for MDX out there. So uh, one of them is MDX Studio, uh, which is an awesome tool. It's a uh, it allows you to actually do a little bit of analysis on your MDX to see if your uh, uh, kind of performance tuning, basically checking to see if you got anything in there that you could do better. MDX Studio is a great one for that. Uh, there's another one. Uh, it's uh, it's actually one you have to pay for. Uh, MDX Studio is free. It's a free download. Uh, the other one I can't remember the name of. It. Cube, I think it's called Cube Browser or something like that, or or Cube Connector. I can't remember the other one is, but you have to pay for that one. Um, that one's got a ton of options in it. But uh, MDX Studio is a great one for just writing MDX. Uh, oh, David told me to deploy and process a cube. Oh, thank you, David. Yeah, he called me. <laughs> <that was> good. <laughs> Way to pay attention, team. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Can you see all the date calc values in a local cube? Can you see all the date calc values in a local cube? Hmm. So, yeah, if you if you're save the cube locally onto your desktop, uh, all the calculations, everything you have in the cube should still show up there as long as you're you know, saving the uh, the cube locally. All right, so let's go back see if there's any other questions in the past here. Um, looks like about it. Okay. Uh, how much Mountain Dew has Mike had this morning? He's talking so fast, his words just blow. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, <laughs> I, I apologize for that. So uh, I, I, I do tend to talk fast. I try to slow down, but oh, I'm just really bad about that. If you think I'm bad, you should listen to Brian Knight. All right. He's oh, like, yeah. Of course. <laughs> His so, tornado uh, I word. apologize. So when you when you go uh, to watch the recording, uh, you can right click on the recording and go to video enhancements and take the speed of the recording. Actually, slow it down. 
and listen to me a little slower there. Maybe it'll, it'll work for you better. <laughs> <laughs> or you can watch it eight times. Right, and, you know, either way. Or, 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 you, or you watch it eight times, yeah. <laughs> well, All right. Well, if that's it, then thank you, everyone, for joining us. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, Melissa is in training to become another webinar queen uh, hosting. So we, uh, we're working through some kinks. But thank you for joining us. And thank you so much, Mike, for your wonderful presentation. And uh, we hope you'll join us on every Tuesday and Thursday for free training on the G's. All right. Thanks a lot. You guys have a Thanks, great day. Thanks, everyone. The organizer has ended the session, and this.